Hi, it's Miss Donna with Raleigh Parks Recreation and Cultural Resources. This video is part of our At Home with Nature series. Who's that? We are learning about owls and owls are nighttime hunters. We're going to listen to a story. It's called Owl Noon and it was written by Jane Yolen. And it tells the story of a little girl who heads outdoors one cold winter night with her dad searching for owls. It was late one winter night, long past my bedtime, when Pa and I went owling. There was no wind, the trees stood still as giant statues, and the moon was so bright the sky seemed to shine. And somewhere behind us a train whistle blew, long and low like a sad, sad song. I could hear it through the woolen cap that Pa had pulled down over my ears. A farm dog answered the train, and then a second dog joined in. They sang out trains and dogs for a real long time. And when their voices faded away, it was as quiet as a dream. And we walked on towards the woods, Pa and I. Our feet crunched over the crisp snow and little gray footprints followed us. Pa made a long shadow, but mine was short and round. I had to run after him every now and then to keep up and my short round shadow bumped after me. But I never called out. If you go owling, you have to be quiet. That's what Pa always says. I had been waiting to go owling with Pa for a long, long time. We reached the line of pine trees, black and pointy against the sky, and Pa held up his hand. I stopped right where I was and waited. He looked up as if searching the stars, as if reading a map up there. The moon made his face into a silver mask. And then he called, hoo, 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 hoo. the sound of a great horned owl, hoo, 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 hoo. and again he called out and then again, and after each call he was silent. And for a moment we both listened, but there was no answer. Pa shrugged and I shrugged. I was not disappointed. My brothers all said, sometimes there's an owl and sometimes there isn't. We walked on. I could feel the cold as if someone's icy hand was palm down on my back and my nose and the tops of my cheeks felt cold and hot at the same time. But I never said a word. If you go owling, you have to be quiet and make your own heat. We went into the woods. The shadows were the blackest things I had ever seen. They stained the white snow. My mouth felt furry for the scarf over it was wet and warm. I didn't ask what kinds of things hide behind black trees in the middle of the night. When you go owling, you have to be brave. Then we came to a clearing in the dark woods. The moon was high above us. It seemed to fit exactly over the center of the clearing and the snow below it was whiter than the milk in a cereal bowl. I sighed and Pa held up his hand at the sound I put my mittens over the scarf over my mouth and I listened hard. And then Pa called, hoo, 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 hoo. I listened and I looked so hard my ears hurt and my eyes got cloudy with the cold and Pa raised his face to call out again. But before he could open his mouth and echo, came threading its way through the trees. Hoo, 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 hoo. Pa 
Ha almost smiled. And then he called back, hoo, 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 just as if he and the owl were talking about supper or about the woods or the moon or the cold. I took my mitten off the scarf off my mouth and I almost smiled too. The owl's call came closer. From high up in the trees on the edge of the meadow, nothing in the meadow moved. All of a sudden, an owl shadow, part of the big tree shadow, lifted off and flew right over us. We watched silently with heat in our mouths, the heat of all the words we had not spoken. The shadow hooted again. Pa turned on his big flashlight and caught the owl just as it was landing on a branch. For one minute, three minutes, maybe even a hundred minutes, we stared at one another. And then the owl pumped its great wings and lifted off the branch like a shadow without sound. It flew back into the forest. Time to go home, Pa said to me. I knew then I could talk. I could even laugh out loud, but I was a shadow as we walked home. When you go owling, you don't need words or warm or anything but hope. That's what Pa says. The kind of hope that flies on silent wings under a shining owl moon. The end.